Hi, my name is Rodrigo, and I'm here today to share with you the best study resources that I use to pass my CISSE exam. Guys, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this video. Stay till the end because you do have a surprise. And if you enjoy, please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. Let's go! And of course, you can imagine what would be the first study resource that I used. This one that I'm right that I have right here, the recommended book by C Square, written by Mike Chappell and among other folks. I wish I could have here to show to you, but I decided to donate my study guide to some friend that was pursuing the C certification after me. And of course, this one that I'm showing here is the ninth edition. I studied using the eighth edition because I took my certification early this year. But of course, it remains super relevant. It's still recommended by the SSC Square, so it's important for you to start reading this book. This can be a little massive reading, but I truly recommend it because you can see with this book exactly how you can approach the exam the level that you need to go in each of domain. So it's important for you to understand that they, and we also know that, that the exam is super wide, but just one inch deep. And people tend to make a mistake to go too deep in some areas and sometimes area that one feels comfortable for reasonable reasons. But it's important for you to understand how deep you need to go within all the domains. That's why getting the study guide recommended by them can give you this perspective and then you can make a decision if you want to go deep in a little other domain, probably in some domain that you are not familiar with, but I can give you more tips to the end of this video what I've done to, to mitigate this issue because of course I didn't have the knowledge on all the eight domains. I had more knowledge on some of domains, for example, this domain number four, communications and network security in number seven, the security operations are domains that I was not truly familiar when I started studying for this certification. So it was important to me to understand from them what would be their expectation on all the domains that I don't feel comfortable, that I didn't feel comfortable. And from there, strategize what would be my plan to attack those domains. So guys, right there, this is the first best guide that you need to use. Of course, it's important to talk about the book of knowledge that they have. Personally, I don't recommend you to go on this road. This is a massive book, almost 1,000 pages. Of course, if you read this book, memorize everything, you're going you're gonna to pass the exam. I don't feel comfortable studying like this. I think it's too much effort and too much memorization that I don't like to do. That's why, although many people recommend to go and get the book of knowledge, I don't recommend, but I would love to hear your thoughts if you have used to get your CISP certification. And the third and amazing resource that I used is the Thor Peterson Udemy courses. Thor has put together many courses and is split by domains, as you can see right here, I just added one example, and he has courses for the domain 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8. A lot of videos, this is personally things that I like to study, I like videos instead of reading a lot. I rather prefer to get in and, and watch some videos. And Thor is very methodical, he has a lot of knowledge about the certification, of course, and can give you valuable tips on how to approach the exam. And of course, I also use two other resources from Thor. Thor made available two different type of tests. He put together tests for each domain, approximately 250 questions, and other type of tests combining all the domains for you to test, right? To have a feeling how it would be to get uh, the certification at the moment you are taking the exam. It's important to understand how I approach this type of situations. What I've done was watch the videos, for example, for domain one and two, and right away take the example questions from the domain one and two. 
I did that for the three and four and right after get the tests and questions for this specific domain and I follow this strategy. Once I completed all the domains and all the questions, I took some days off and then I took the all domains questions together from four. It was a good practice for me to, okay, let me take some days off, make sure that I create this mass memory, right? And I could clear the questions that he was proposing. And if I cleared and I reached 80% of that specific domain, I felt comfortable. I didn't get the 80% of each domain the first time I took his questions. What I've done, what everyone will do at that time. I go back, watch the Guinea videos, did the first questions, take some days, and then I redid all the questions together. It was a good practice for me either to test the timing for the test, because we know we have a very tight three hours to complete all the exam, and also to make sure that I'm not just memorizing those answers and that I really know each domain well enough to be able to pass the exam. The next resource that I used, I'm being very careful putting it as a best study resource because Mike Chappell has also created a course in added to LinkedIn Learning and you can take those courses. Of course, Mike has split it into domains, very good approach, of course, but can be a little bit repetitive because I have already read his book from ISC Square. But as I mentioned before, I really like to watch videos to learn things. So it was a very good practice for the first to read the study guide and have it as my Bible, then go to Thor Peterson, which are little different approach, different tips, but also super valuable. And then go and take all Mike Chappell's LinkedIn courses to make sure that I have mastered all the domains that I needed. I felt very useful. Mike's Chapel's course, it's way smaller than Ford Peterson's course, but I didn't care at that point because I knew that all the topics was covered from the ICC Square book, of course, from Ford Peterson, and I used Mike Chapel's just to review a couple of things. An amazing resource. I truly recommend you to get that. We know that UDMI and LinkedIn Learning can have some license that you need to pay. I truly recommend you to pay for those licenses to take those courses. But we know that many organizations that probably you are working with now currently, they provide some licenses to the employees. So try to leverage that because it's going to be very valuable for you. In the fourth and last resource that I used, I used in a very specific way. As I mentioned at the beginning, there were certain domains, especially domain number four and especially in domain number seven. When you're talking about physical security and etc., I were I was not that familiar with. And what I did was I was feeling that I needed to go a little bit deep to make sure that I'm mastering that knowledge and not just memorizing a lot of information to be able to clear the exam because I truly care about this certification. So I used this book over here, the 11th hour, just to review those domains that I, I was not familiar at that time. I didn't use this book to cover things like risk and software security and testing because I was very familiar with these domains. So I didn't feel the need to go deep any further on these domains. So I use this book just to make sure that I can have all different perspectives, all different tips, and probably some different guidance, some different type of tests and questions that I didn't see using the official guide, Thor's courses, and Mike's courses in LinkedIn. So I recommend you, if you want to go deep in one of domains that you don't feel comfortable, try to get this book that I also donated to this friend of mine that were pursuing the certification, but I would love to show it to you, but I can put it right here. And guys, those are the very four and best study resources that I've used. Things that I know that many people recommend is for you to join Discord groups, 
try to find study groups. Personally, I don't like for this specific certification, of course. And the reason is when you're using a study group to get in past the certification, specifically a certification that has like so many domains, so broad knowledge, you can be caught in a situation that you are studying for a domain that you already know enough. And this can happen, of course, when you're studying a group. So I try to stay away from these this study groups because I knew exactly the domains that I had to go a little bit further. And if I decided to join a study group, I could be caught studying a lot about software security, for example, things that I didn't feel that I need to go any further because I had the knowledge already. So many people recommend, that's why I'm not recommending you to go and get and join some study groups. But of course, this is a very personal opinion and people want to have this, this proximity. Joining a study group, it will make you to spend more time getting prepared for your exam because you're gonna need to follow their pace, you're gonna want to follow their pace, and of course you are studying every single, single domain to make sure that everyone understands everything. This is not an approach that I had because I wanted to take my certifications within eight weeks, and I did that. So that's my opinion about study groups for the CISSP certification. I used a study group when I was getting my PMP certification for totally different reasons, but this is a topic for a different video. But I, again, I would love to hear your comments on this one. And the main thing that you need to understand we are studying for CISSP certification is you need to have a plan on how to attack your study and of course, and how to attack the certification. And the recommendation that I can give to you don't get caught trying to read every single book that we have available, every single course that you have available. If we stick to those official study guides, those two courses, and the second one from Mac Chapel is from the study guide, I'm sure you're gonna pass the exam. You need to understand and create the mindset and adjust your mindset that you are not approaching the exam as a technical person. You are a manager. And this is the most difficult thing to be prepared because sometimes you're gonna be in a situation that you need to answer a question being a manager, not a technical person. You can have multiple correct answer, but what is the best correct answer from a management perspective? This is something that you need to put in your mind. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you want to check my unbox that I made a couple of months ago, you can check on the card that I put over here. And this is a very nice surprise for you. I hope you have enjoyed. See you next week.